Uh, but I, I jumped there prematurely because we should step back, which I think is to address a topic that, you, you know, I heard you first talk about many years ago and you explained really well in the book. And that is that all vaccines cause a distortion in your immune response and imbalance from the cell mediated immunity, immunity and the uh, humoral immunity. And that distortion radically increases your risk of cancer. So it's a fascinating story. And why don't you expand on that? Right. That, that's, that's the sort of main part of the book that, mm -hmm. that um, again, you know, the fever snot paradigm mm -hmm. there. So, so here's what happens when you get a childhood diseases or a viral disease. So step one, you've never encountered this virus before. So it gets in and infects the cells. And, and what does that mean? It goes into the cell and distorts the gel. The body here, here's how I'm thinking about it here. The body says to itself, we can't have these distorted gels because that changes everything. It changes our perception. It changes how we function, changes our spatial orientation. So first step in immunity is develop a certain immune system called the cell-mediated immune system, whose job it is is to use the white blood cells and chemicals that attract the white blood cells to the site of these infected cells, and basically it chews up and spits out these cells, creating snot. And the process usually takes anywhere from five to 10 days or so, that's the general course. And during that time, the person, or particularly the child, is what we call sick. They have a fever, they have mucus, they have a cough, they have a runny nose, all the things we call sick. Now, at the end of that time of being sick, and I would point out that these things we call sick, fever, snot, etc., are not the virus. They're the virus promote, provoking a cell-mediated response. And how do I know that? Because you can provoke a cell-mediated response with no viral infection and you're, quote, sick. And the other thing you can do is you can inject somebody or infect somebody with a virus and use prednisone to stop their cell-mediated response, and they'll never get sick. You can kill them, but they won't be, quote, sick. They won't have a flu and a cold and fever and all that. So the, the experience of being sick is the cell-mediated immune system becoming activated. And the function of that is to clear the virus clear the dead cells, rejuvenate the gels. Once that happens, you're no longer sick anymore, but, the, but you know, our, our, our biology and its wisdom has said, well, we don't wanna get that same sickness over again, like measles, you don't wanna have measles every third week. So we develop a second system called the humoral immune system, that makes antibodies to a certain part of the virus so that if we ever encounter that virus again, it can clear the virus before it infects the cells. The cell-mediated reaction never has to get involved and there's no symptoms ever again from measles. And so for your entire life, if the cell-mediated comes first and the humoral comes second, you will never have measles again. And that is almost a 100% foolproof system. Now, the important point about that is the humoral part, there's no symptoms. You don't know when you're making antibodies. It happens <coughs> approximately six to eight weeks after the initial event. So that's how we're meant. That's the two parts of our immune system. Now, here's what happens with vaccines. Vaccines are engineered to not provoke a cell-mediated reaction. Why is that? Because if you gave somebody a live virus and provoked a cell-mediated reaction, you would make the child sick with all the attendant risks of that, and the parents would say, hey, you just made my child sick, I'm not doing this again. So the whole point of a vaccine is to not have a cell-mediated re reaction, which is the part that clears the virus and clears whatever else you put in the virus. And so they do provoke an antibody response, albeit a temporary one, because if without the cell mediated coming first, 
the antibody response doesn't last. How do I know that? Because you have to keep giving booster shots over and over again, or the immunity wears off. Now, you could say this, the, the strategy of a vaccine is to provoke antibody responses. Mm -hmm. That's the strategy. Mm -hmm. And then you could say, th there's another thing that comes into play here, which is why, do you, why don't they give just measles virus and saline? Mm -hmm. Like, why do we put all this stuff, like dead fetal cells and glyphosate and aluminum and formaldehyde and a whole list as long as your arm of stuff that nobody would get anywhere near if they, could, if they thought about it? Why do they put that stuff in there? Why don't they just put measles virus, the part of the measles virus, the antigenic part, and saline? It's because it doesn't make an antibody reaction. Not strong enough. Yeah, there's no antibody reaction to do anything, and so the thing doesn't work. So you have to put aluminum in it. Or another it, adjuvant. There's or another it, adjuvant. It might be yeah. even more toxic. Right. Although aluminum is pretty bad. <laughs> aluminum is pretty bad. So, and these are called adjuvants, like you said. Adjuvant means helper, means this, these are to give a broad spectrum antibody humoral immune response. So that's, that's the field. Now, when you look at, for instance, the definition of an autoimmune disease or the definition of, you know, we're talking anything from Hashimoto's and rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease and allergies and on and on. All these, all these diseases, they are characterized by an excessive antibody reaction. That's how we diagnose them. You have antibodies to ANA. That means you have lupus. You have antibodies to your cartilage, rheumatoid factor. That means you have uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You have antibodies to your intestinal cells. That means you have Crohn's. You have antibodies to your thyroid. That's like 40 million people. That means you have Hashimoto's. So at some point, somebody has to ask, how come all these people have too many antibodies? And as you know, because I'm a bit of a smart aleck, I say, <laughs> maybe the vaccine program worked. <laughs> I mean, that's the point, right? To yeah. make you have antibodies. Right. So it worked. You yeah. got too many antibodies. Now, if you ask a vaccine researcher or immunologist, is it true that this, these adjuvants, aluminum and you know, human DNA, they only make you make antibodies to the measles virus, <laughs> right? Right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody thinks that. There, there's no theoretical way that you can give a nonspecific adjuvant and think that it's only going to make diphtheria antibodies. Mm -hmm. That's just not, it doesn't work like that. They hope it does. And in fact, it does make diphtheria antibodies because you put diphtheria antigens in the solution. Mm -hmm. But the chance of it only making those is zero. So you have people walking around with nonspecific activation of their humoral immune system. Now, I can read you a quote from a guy named Yehuda Schoenfeld, who is the editor-in-chief of Autoimmunity Reviews and the Journal of Autoimmunology, and wrote hundreds of papers and books on how autoimmune de uh, diseases develop. And he basically says there's a syndrome called ASIA, which stands for Autoimmune Syndrome Induced by Adjuvant, which is apparently going to be named the Schoenfeld renamed the Schoenfeld syndrome. Mm. And he estimates there's 150 million people worldwide <laughs> who have this syndrome. Probably and it's autoimmune syndrome induced by adjuvant. What's the adjuvant? I mean, that's the whole point. We're injecting adjuvants to make humoral reactions. Now, when you, when you